Okay, we are live. Good to see everybody. Late night live stream. We're back on the channel here. I just wanted to interrupt my review process that I've been doing on these laptops to uh, give you a little bit of update on these because I will be dropping these videos probably next day or so as I finalize these full reviews. Okay, so it is hot here in Las Vegas. That is correct, Handquake. We'll get to some of your comments and questions in a moment. And uh, good to see everybody. Okay, so uh, let me get rid of the music. So just wanted to do a quick live stream tonight. I know it's late. I know depending on where you are right now, it's 7.48 p.m. in Las Vegas here in Pacific time, of course. And I wanted to give you an update on what, what's been going on with these two laptops in particular. But of course, I had some other stuff come in. Now, for those wondering, I will be doing an, a, an unboxing and review of the ThinkPad Z13 that's in transit from China coming from Shanghai as we speak. So I don't know if I'm going to get it before the weekend. It got a little delayed. That's why I didn't get it yet, but I will be getting it uh, no later than early next week. So hopefully, it. I already saw that it cleared customs, so maybe we will get it before, um, before the weekend. That would be great by tomorrow. But if I don't get it, uh, then I will have it for next week. So... Um, I really appreciate that hand quick. Yeah, for those that are uh, new to the channel, hit that like button. It helps get this spread out over YouTube. If you're already not subscribed to the channel, why not subscribe and let's get grow this channel. We're at 127,000. We're going to hit 128 very soon. We have over 28 million views. We're going to hit 29 million soon. So it's really growing. And I would appreciate that. Good to see Tech Realm here. Uh, David Smith is here. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Uh, we got Richmond Nash here, as we have, I see, 32 of you already. And I wanted to give you my thoughts on this. So on the left, of course, is the Dell XPS 13 9320. And to the right of it is, of course, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10. So what are my thoughts on it? Well, let's start off with the Dell, which is a really striking device. Um, you can see it here. And let me get rid of the lower third there. You can see... The radical design, I call it radical, but it really is a nice design. I mean, a beautiful looking laptop as far as the XPS 13 Plus. Now, oh, there is a little bit more sharper edges than the other laptops I've been reviewing. So I, I talked about it last time, but I absolutely love this haptic touchpad. It's working really well on it. Love the keyboard. You know, it's a space together type keyboard, but I really am enjoying typing on it for the past three weeks. So as I've been getting used to this laptop, really the things that stand out to me are how good that haptic touchpad is for a Windows laptop. And of course, the uh, there's the capacitive buttons when it comes to this. This is, of course, the uh, capacitive row instead of physical keys. And I talked about it in the last couple of live streams and so forth. And I thought, you know, as far as a, a keyboard in, and considering this is a great keyboard, would I like to have physical keys? Yes. But I, I spoke to Dell and Dell told me that they did this. And I spoke about this uh, another time as well, that they were able to get a better thermal uh, design in, in there because it had extra room without the physical keys. So I tested the thermals on this and I'm going to talk more about it in the upcoming full review. Um, but I got to say it does run pretty hot. They let this ramp up to about a hundred degrees Celsius, uh, but it doesn't throttle down all that much so far of what I'm seeing, uh, as opposed to this one. So the other thing about the thermals on the ThinkPad, they took a little different approach. Okay. So instead of letting it run hot, like they do on the Dell, uh, what Lenovo did was they get, let it get to about 78, 79 degrees or they, they let it go out to 95 or 93, and then they'll throttle it down to get it to around 79, 78 degrees Celsius. So you will see a little bit reduced performance uh, in sustained workloads on that Lenovo. 
So not surprised in that regard because of the thin nature of these laptops, but they took a little bit of a different approach here. That Having said that, the numbers on both are very good. And it, of course, is going to depend on what you're doing with this laptop. So uh, to me, that is going, is going to be the thing to look at with this. Um, but I think overall, these are really nice laptops. They're not cheap, of course. This one I spent with my own money. This one, which is a $2,000 I spent. And then this one came as a review unit. But of course, look in the link below. For both of these, you'll get the latest pricing. And I know Lenovo likes to run sales. So that's uh, been pretty good. Uh, is everything going well on the, on the stream here? I just want to make sure because I don't see much activity right now on the... Um, chat so i just want to make sure i know it's late so maybe uh, i don't want to i hope that we're at, we're okay in terms of the stream is it look okay and does it sound okay so let me know we got 37 of you watching according to my um numbers here so according to handquake i have the wrong color keyboard so what you're probably referring to is whether or not the uh, lighting on this, the LED backlight on it is easily s differentiated in a dark room. In other words, is the contrast, uh, can you see the contrast between the two? It's not the greatest, you know, it's like a light on light kind of thing, but not bad. It's a lot better on the Lenovo. Um, everything looks good. Okay, according to Richmond Nash, good, because I didn't see too much activity. I'm like talking here and I didn't see too much activity, but we do have 39 people. I didn't expect a lot. Again, late night, live stream. Um, so these are very different laptops and they took different approaches with the thermals. And I'll talk more about it in each, each individual full review. Uh, the keyboard on the Lenovo, I'm just freestyling here as far as my thoughts. These are just my thoughts. You'll get a formal review on these. This keyboard on the Lenovo is fantastic. And the difference this time, I think they're going a little bit more squared keys on it. And um, you can see it here, or I can go here. Uh, I know it's a little dark, but let me go in the light there. It's hard to show this laptop in this lighting. There you can see it there. Um, I tried to increase the lighting from last time. It looks a little bit better, I think. Let me know. But this keyboard is fantastic. And the other thing that's different with that keyboard is their air intake system they put on that. So that's different than Gen 9. They also put a vent on the back here. So they have a heat vent on the back and a... Um, and the air intake system and the thermals are good. Now they kept it very quiet on this. This one also gets pretty quiet as well, but uh, you do hear the fans under full, you know, black, full throttle or what should I say throttle, full load, I should say is the word I'm trying to get here. Uh, but both are pretty good in terms of a, uh, everyday use like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing and all that. So uh, according to Raymond Nash, the, does the heat on the Dell affect use of in your lap or better use on the table or your lap? So I'm going to talk about this in the full review because I did uh, use my thermal. Uh, let me put myself down there. I did use my thermal camera on this and I will show you. It does get pretty hot on one spot on it. Not terrible, but you de you will notice it. This ran a lot cooler in terms of the, uh, the not a lot, but I would say a little bit less uh, heat on the, the surface temperatures. Um, where are the vents on the, on the S XPS? So I, there's no vent. I don't, it, it's over here. You can sort of see... Um, there's some air intake. I'm not really there. You have on the, the bottom. Let me go to the bottom here. And you can see it here. So you have some air intakes there. Uh, definitely not as much as this one, that's for sure. And it, while we're looking at it, the design is really nice. Although the logo, a lot of people would like the XPS logo, like the one you get here, to be put over here. And I kind of agree. I think that would be a nice touch. Um the display on this one particular, this display is absolutely gorgeous. This is an OLED display, 3.5K. There are other options you can get. Very nice. Now, the Full HD Plus on the Lenovo is very good as well. That's a 1920 by 1200. It's also a touch display. These are both touch displays. And it's raining here, by the way, in Las Vegas. I hear it outside. Uh, I know it was raining a little bit earlier, which is not, not something we normally get here, but uh, just a little digression. But uh, yes, the, it's pretty nice as far as the touchscreens. Uh, very nice. Now, uh, 
the battery life on these are not going to be stellar when you compare it to something like the MacBook. Uh, and I've noticed with the 12th gen Alder Lakes, not, not the best battery life. Not terrible, but not the best battery life. Um, I ran two extra tests for these since the last time I reported on them. My initial test with this, I got a bit about seven hours, 14 minutes or something like that. I got over eight hours with a little bit of tweaking on the second time I ran my test. So I, I changed a little bit of settings. I turned off the Bluetooth. I lowered the screen a little bit more, not much. And I got a little bit over eight hours on this. I didn't know if the Bluetooth made a big difference, but I turned it off. I made sure all the lights are off. Of course, you cannot turn off this row over here. Um, that's always on. And it's not flickering in real life. I've mentioned that before. It's the PWM that they use. But in real life, it's, it's static. You don't see it flickering. Now, this one I ran a second test on. This didn't do great the first time around. Uh, I got over nine hours on the second time I did it. And again, I did the same thing. I lowered the uh, screen brightness to about 100 nits instead of 150. And then I did the same thing. I turned the Bluetooth off on that, made sure they're both on efficiency mode. And I got over nine hours. So I think I got eight hours and 40 minutes, actually, almost closer to nine hours on this one. Second time I did the test. And on this one, I got... Uh, over nine hours. So what does that tell me? That tells me not great battery life. You, these are not more than six, seven hour devices for mixed use, depending on what you're doing. AMD might be, do, might be a better choice for these. I agree, but here's the problem. How is AMD, which I love, they're my namesake, of course, how would they scale up to get into these? In other words, can they produce enough chips? And we're going to get a good idea of the 6,000 series Ryzen next week, or maybe even this weekend, if I can get that delivery of the ThinkPad Z13. And that Z -pad, the Z13 is an interesting case because it's a premium ThinkPad uh, like you have here, but with a Ryzen processor. And you got the Radeon graphics and all that stuff, the RDNA, what is it, two or three? I don't remember now, but whatever it is, um, that's gonna be a pretty interesting device. It's gonna have a premium screen on it, I guess. I don't know what they're sending me, but I'll be, I'll have that. And um, there's optional, I think, OLED maybe on that one as well. Now the OLED on this one is also available, 2.8K. Um, and they, and I, I kind of think, I kind of, I kind of understand why they didn't send me the OLED because the battery life uh, would have been even worse. Now I'm not saying that this is terrible, uh, but I am saying it's not the greatest. Okay, so. That tells me a couple of things that if they would have sent me the OLED, they probably would have gotten even worse battery life. And I'm no, I can tell you it would have been worse. And that's why I probably think they sent reviewers the uh, full HD plus, which by the way is a beautiful display. I have no qualms recommending that display, but, but uh, if you do go with the OLED, it's gonna have the higher contrast. It's gonna have the great color accuracy. It's gonna be great for a content creator, although, Doing content creation on a 14-inch device, not the most ideal in my opinion, but that's just me. Uh, but yeah, you know, so there you go. Well, more reason not to buy them. Boycotting uh, the, that line might be the, our only option. We need competition. And like I said, uh, Cameron, good to see you. Uh, like I said, we're going to get that Z13 in. It's on its way out of Shanghai, on my way, on its way to me here in Las Vegas, and we're gonna get a look at the Ryzen on a premium ThinkPad. And I looked at it back in CES when I got invited to New York to see their showcase, and I got a little hands-on time, and I I'm lo I love the 13-inch the and the 16-inch. They both, uh, to me, uh, represented something pretty interesting with the AMD aspect of it. And again, look, would I wanna see AMD options on this? Absolutely, because I'm a big fan of it. They're, I think they might be better in battery life, uh, I would imagine they would be, but again, until I get it into the studio, we won't know as we have 60 of you watching. Uh, you got in late, uh, Canoopling. Sorry, got in late. How long did the X1 Carbon last? So I'll repeat a little bit of what I said. Of course, I'll leave this up as a replay. So the on the X1, and we want to go back to there, the X1 Carbon Gen 10, which is over here, uh, the initial test, I think I got over six hours or whatever it was. I ran or seven hours, I don't remember. The second time I ran it, I tweaked a few settings. I turned off the uh, Bluetooth. I turned off some radios that we're not using. I turned off the backlight. I lowered it to about 100 nits. 
instead of 150. I ran the test. I got over nine hours. So that made a difference. I put it in also in efficiency mode. Now, I did the same thing for the Dell on the XPS 13 Plus, turned off the Bluetooth, turned off the backlighting, put it in the efficiency mode, and then I also lowered down to 100 nits, and that got, um, uh, what did I get? So I got not eight hours and 40 minutes. Close, not, not, that, not that bad, actually. So, not great battery life, uh, not as bad as some of the the threads on Reddit. Now, speaking of Reddit, which, you know, I got to learn my lesson. Every time I go over to Reddit, they, they kill me over there. So I posted this video of the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10. So I noticed that there was a Reddit thread about my video. I went over there, of course, the big, that's mistake number one. <laughs> Never go to Reddit. How they blasted me. Oh man, they really can't stand me over there. They're telling me how they unsubscribe to me because they think I'm a shill for Lenovo. Um, and that I'm that they think I'm getting paid. Believe me, I'm not getting paid. I, I'm open to getting paid. Lenovo, if you're watching, um, I would love to get paid. <laughs> Let's talk, but I no, I'm not getting paid. And I would never get paid and do a review. So that's you know, I have ethics. I won't do that. I would do a sponsored video. Yes. And I would tell you it's sponsored, but as of a uh, full review, no, I would never take money in exchange for a review. I don't do that. Maybe some people do. I just don't notice the sarcasm in the comment. I didn't see it. Uh, but anyway, so getting back to what I, I went over to Reddit. I mean, I, I thought about maybe like showing you on this live stream, but eh, I'm not gonna, it's not worth it. So I decided, you know, I'm not going to go to Reddit, but then I did post a few updates there to let the people know further battery tests because I saw a lot of misinformation there. And they're all saying how this didn't this did not do as well as the Gen 9, this one. So in terms of sustained workload, so they're seeing thermal throttling. Yes, it does thermal throttle, but I ran the 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 Cinebench R23, the extended test and it still did better than the Gen 9. How do I know? Because I have the Gen 9. I have two versions, actually. One with the 4K Plus display, IPS, and I also have the Full HD Plus. So I am the one who actually has all of this stuff, and I did a comparison, and I'll talk about it in the full review. And I know I, I didn't take the bra. Oh, there's the bra. I guess he was one of them. No, the, it was terrible what you guys were telling about me. I don't care. I don't take it personally. But I just want to give the facts that I have observed. And I didn't see that this one was outpaced by the Gen 9. No, the Gen 10, much better um, multi-core score. I saw a 40% to 50% increase in that. I saw about a 25 to 30% in the single core. And then when I ran the Cinebench R23, you're looking at about a 30 to 40% over the sustained workload. So it accounts for the thermal throttling. And I saw about 18%, 20% increase year over year with the single core. So uh, lesson number one, never go to Reddit. <laughs> kidding. And number two, um, you know, believe the reviewers who actually are reviewing this stuff. So there was somebody there. I don't know if it was you, bro. I don't know, but... I don't care. I don't, to be honest with you. But if it was you, if it wasn't you, I don't know. But uh, the bottom line is, is that, you know, everybody jumps the gun. They think, oh, this is a terrible thing. This uh, 12th gen Intel is the worst thing that ever created. No, the, 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 the numbers show different. And the numbers show really good multi-core performance, improved single core. Now, is the Intel Iris graphics a little bit, uh, getting a little bit long in the tooth? I think so. I think so, and that's why we had a lot of high hopes for the ARC graphics, although I'm hearing uh, mixed reviews on that, and again, I don't have anything to compare that to, but, um, but as far as jumping the gun and saying these are not good devices, I disagree. These are big improvements over their, um, their counterparts from last year, and not only that, people, not only that... <clears throat> But when you compared it to some of the MacBook Pro numbers, these actually did better. I got better multi-core on this Dell XPS 13 than I did on the, on the M1 Pro that I reviewed uh, on the 13-inch. And, and then I took the numbers that I've been reading and documenting from other reviewers that were getting 8,500, 8, 8,700 in the multi-core. This did better. This did 
about the same or maybe a little bit better. I got to remember. I don't remember. Check. I have to check the numbers. Uh, I, I thank you. I appreciate that, bro. It wasn't you. I didn't think it was you. But the bottom line is, is that let's not jump the gun. These these 12 gen Intel processors are very powerful. Yes, they have more cores. They have the efficiency cores. These are particular have 12. They got the eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. Um, but then, of course, uh, you're going to have the heat issues that you have to contend with. Now, they did it a little bit different. Dell did it a little bit different than Lenovo. And again, I'll talk about this in the upcoming reviews that are dropping the next couple of days. But I just wanted to let everybody know. I went over to the Reddit, and the people were saying they unsub for me. They can't trust me or they, in YouTube in general. And they were starting to lump me in with Dave2D and all these other people they unsubscribed from. But... Uh, and, and I'm glad, bro, you like the Gen 9. And again, that's the thing. I have both the Gen 9 and the Gen 10. And I'm actually running the numbers. And I'm seeing different than what these people are saying on Reddit. Now, with that being said, let's take some of your questions. Yeah, it makes no sense. Who wants more performance uh, on a 13-inch with no dedicated GPU? So, right. And I, 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 I'm picking up on that. And I agree. I agree. There needs to be, people have to be a little bit more sensible about this stuff. And we got our first super chat from our good buddy. You know who it is. Handquake. Moderator. Thank you. Member. So $5. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Expected date range for the Z13. If you joined us late, Sandy, I'm assuming you are. I, I updated everybody on it. Um, uh, what we're seeing here is uh, hopefully it's probably next week, but there is an outside chance it might come before the week and maybe tomorrow. I don't know because I saw it left Shanghai and it's on its way to the studio. So... I really would love to get it this weekend and we can run with it this weekend, but I don't know uh, if it's going to come. That's going to have the Ryzen 6000 series in it. We're going to talk, we're going to dissect everything. We're going to compare it to the 12th gen. We're going to compare it to Apple numbers. Speaking of Apple people, I, um, and I have coming this week in that graphic below, but really the one is coming next week. Probably both. Of, no, these will be coming on the weekend, the XPS 13 and the, the Gen 10, but the um, the Z13, I'm, I'm anticipating next week. But if it does come sooner, I'll let everybody know. But speaking of Apple, so I have one coming. I didn't know. I don't know if when it's going to ship for the M M. What is it? The uh, MacBook Air M2. Now I'm hearing mixed results on this one, and I kind of be honest with you. I want to be straightforward with you. I might. I'm thinking of canceling my order. What do you people think? Maybe we should do a poll here. Um, should I, and let me do, let me just, uh, maybe put it in here. Let me do a poll and it's just a yes or no. Should I review the Mac book air M two? And I'm going to put a poll in just to get the pulse of the community. Uh, I have one on order. It's supposed to come the 19th, but I don't know. So let me ask you, I've just put it in the chat. Should be there any moment, hopefully. There it is. So vote. Vote. Let me know because I can cancel it. <laughs> I don't want to waste anybody's time. Do you want to see it? Because I can compare it to the Dell. I can compare it to the ThinkPad and whatever else I have coming in. All right. Let me go back and see if I missed any questions. So you're really annoyed, uh, according to uh, Jungle Lou, you're really annoyed by the fan noise of the Dell computers. Would you recommend Mac? We're going to find out soon. Uh, howdy. Yeah, good to see you, Andrew. Andrew, Man, that XPS 13 looks so hot, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Quite a shame about the thermals. No, it's not bad. Let me, let, me, let me clarify the thing. It's very good when you're doing everyday tasks like most people. Uh, it, the fans don't come on. Actually, it's actually pretty quiet. Where you hear the fans is when you're putting it under full load, maximum load. All the cores are working. Everything's under full load, which is very rare that most people will have that. Now, these are not gaming machines, and I think I've made it clear. Um, gaming machines in general uh, are not this. You want something with a discrete GPU, and there it would be a lot better when it comes to that. All right, let me go back to some of your questions. Uh, let's see here. Is the Z, is the Z premium enough? Well, we're going to find out. 
Cameron, we're going to find out. Now, I did get some hands-on time back in January uh, when I visited with Dell, with, with, Del, with uh, Lenovo, and I thought it was premium, very premium, actually. And in fact, they have a leather one that's also nice. I, I have the black one coming. This looks pretty nice. Um, how are the fans on the 13 Plus when using Microsoft Suite apps and Zoom calls? Quiet. To me, it was quiet. It's where you're really pushing it. Very heavy loads. Uh, very, pretty quiet. Now, when you when you run it on the optimized mode or the balance mode, I think that what they call it, it, it you're going to hear it intermittently depending on the needs. But for the most part, it's been quiet and it runs cool. But when you're really pushing it, that's where you hear it. Good to see Grendel. We haven't seen you in a while. I hope you've been doing well. Unless doing heavy video on the X on the 13 is fine. Played one with one yesterday. Yeah, uh, you uh, you really you're not going to hear the fans when you're really just doing everyday tasks. I'm just, I, I don't know how else to say it. That's what it is. I'll talk more about it in the full review. Which has the better camera? I think this one has the better camera. Although this is an improved 720p, this has a 1080p camera. I'll show you. I showed you in the unboxing videos and so forth. So that's it was pretty good. Um, how was the camera quality? So check out my videos on that. I did it on the last live streams on both. Um, we can take a look real quick. It's hard to do it with two cameras going at once. So this is a 720p. Okay. And this one's 1080p. They look different. So I think I have it on the wrong setting on this one. So don't go by. I think I was playing with some settings earlier. Let me, um, let me make sure that's clean also. Oh, and by the way, it has the, the shutter switch there. So a little bit more saturation on this one, a little bit more realistic colors on this one. Too red, right? A little bit red. This is a little bit more. Again, the lighting here is just a lot of lighting. I, I upped the lighting, so it's also playing a role. No, I, I understand. Um, I got big lights coming, so really not a fair way to look at these. But just to give you an idea, um, this looks a little washed out, but again, this is not your normal lighting conditions. And I think I did something with this. I don't remember what I did, but I think it's showing now. I don't want to play with it too much. I'll, I'll talk. You'll see the example in the video, but these are the, these are them. Okay. This is a, looks a little bit more saturated, a little bit on the reddish, the warmer side. That's a little bit on the cooler side. So the XPS with a 720p is a big oof. Um, it's a much better camera than it was last year, but of course I think it would have been better to get 1080p. There's no doubt about it. Um, but is it a miss? And uh, no, I think they're okay. I think it would have been nice, especially on a premium laptop, but it's certainly uh, much better than last year. It's usable. This is certainly uh, usable. I would have no qualms using it. I guess a lot of users, um, I guess a lot of users will be using this for code compilation, running a bunch of containers, one or more, uh, virtual machines. It would be nice to do a battery run an everyday task with that software developer running. Yeah, I'm not a developer and I just don't, you know, be honest with you. I don't have the time to do all these like massive battery tests that they take a lot of time. I have a, a standardized test that I use, a special program I use to do my, my test to test battery. And that's why I can, I can gauge these because I have a very accurate test. Uh, but yeah, Dell runs warmer for sure. I take the thicker bezels of the 1080p camera and just drop the webcam or just drop the webcam. It's just a matter of what you want. Again, a big improvement. And the fact that they did put a uh, IR camera is pretty amazing. Now, now they do offer an IR camera on this one, but I don't have that one with the IR camera on this. Now, the other thing is this is a matte display, more matte, although you'll notice the got a lot of lights going today. Uh, this one's a little bit more glossy, and it does go far back, as you see here. This is a 180 degrees. Again, there's, the lighting is going to play a pet part in this, but just so you are wondering, and good hinges on this. Very little screen wobble. Look at that. Very little screen wobble. So uh, it's been pretty good. 
Hey, Andrew, lots of promising reviews on the Ryzen 7 6800U. That is an X1 Extreme or Dell XPS 15 with the 97 watt hour battery RTX 3060. That would be great, but I don't know if we're going to see that uh, anytime soon. MacBook competitor for performance, battery efficiency, and thermals. Yeah. So let's check, uh, let's see what we're doing on the um, poll. And I'm seeing 71% saying yes. So it looks like people want to see the 71% um, yes, 29% no. So if you want to vote, people, go into the chat. And my question is, should I review the MacBook Air M2? So 71% uh, versus 29%. So it looks like people want to see it. I have one in order, so maybe I won't cancel it. So we can compare it. We, we should have something to compare with. Any news, according to David, let me put him on here. Any news on the Surface laptop? So I don't have any personal information on it, but I think we're going to be seeing the Surface Laptop 5 this fall, which I guess we're not that far away. And after the summer, we'll see it. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to see. And uh, big, we want to see that update on that one. It's time. Uh, so hopefully David will see that. After watching the 2022 reviews, I ended up choosing the Yoga 9i 4K OLED. Yeah, you can't go wrong. That's probably my favorite this year. Was able to pick it up on sale for $13.50, and there's been some great sales, people. Watch my links on some of these videos. Uh, if you caught some of the stuff on Amazon Prime Day, but Best Buy had a big, uh, what they called uh, uh, Black Friday in July. It's really looking good. Uh, hey, Andrew, did you get the Yoga 9 7i, 7i Gen 7 and Acer Swift 3 OLED? Nope, I didn't get either one yet, but I should be getting at least the 7i, hopefully very soon. I'm curious to see the memory and the storage results on the MacBook Air. And I've been hearing a handquake, as you probably have seen in the reviews, uh, less than stellar results when it comes to the storage. Uh, they went with a cheaper, um, not as fast storage, and that's not good. Uh, and not not very good. So really not happy with the, the reviews I've been reading. And that's one of the reasons I thought about maybe not doing my review on that. But, you know, 73% of you, according to this poll, is telling me you want to see it, so I will do it. But every time I do that, I get burned, so uh, money-wise. So uh, I always take a chance. But you know what? I want to give a rounded opinion. I want to give you as much choice as possible when you're – you know, you're looking at this stuff and I want to make sure I cover all bases. So of course I'll do it. Storage is the same as an M2 Pro. Okay. Uh, Lenovo equals sales. Yes, they, well, they would like to have sales and I'm they are running some sales, although I saw a lot of good stuff over at Best Buy on all the brands. So uh, check out the links in my videos. Uh, you'll definitely get some good deals on some of that stuff. With the XPS 13... Plus design scale up well to a larger form factor, like a 16 inch. It's quite the looker. You know, I'm not sure. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure how people would respond to a bigger one, the XPS 15 or the 17 with this design. And I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I've kind of mixed feelings because I like the compact nature of it. I like the minimalist look, but if you're a content creator that relies on the bigger displays of the 15 and the 17, um, and you're going to want your physical keys for the function rows, the physical escape key for specific, a lot of programmers and stuff, they want that. Um, you know, I don't know. It would look stunning. But there's no question about it. It's a stunning design. But would it uh, scale up? That's the question. I don't know. I'll talk to Dell. You know, we have conversations on this stuff. And I did I did mention to Dell, I could tell you this, uh, my thoughts on the capacitive row. And... Um, now, this has an ambient light sensor up above here. So really what's happening is this is controlled by the ambient light sensor. So I guess with a firmware update, they may be able to do something with this if they want to turn it off, say, watching a movie. I'm not sure if they're going to do it, to be honest. I did bring it up. But again, there might be some technical challenges that they have to uh, be, a, that I'm, maybe I'm not aware of, but they're aware of, of course. Uh, we'll see. You know, of course, they have good communications with me, so we'll see. 
Uh, Samsung tablet says you can skip the M2 Air review if you're getting burnt by financially. There are a lot of reviews already. And that's always my conundrum whenever these get these um, these get released because I don't get it. You know, Apple didn't send it to me. They don't have any relationship with me. And the truth is, I, I don't really get excited about it. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, having a notch on the display, it's not my cup of tea, but that's just me. Some people are fine with it. They like it. There's a good camera in it, apparently, but uh, I just don't like it. That's me. But I, again, I'm not the biggest des the fan of that design. I like other designs out there that are a little bit more sleek looking. But again, it looks decent. I'm not saying it's not good. It's just not my cup of tea. This is more my my type of design that I like. Now, this is very different. The ThinkPads are more utilitarian, which is has its own unique appeal, I think. Um, to me, the deal breaker, Martin, is the notch. You know, it's not so much a deal breaker. It's just that what's what is what function does it does it serve? In other words, they put a, a an IR camera in here in a very small, obviously space, and it's 720p. It's actually pretty decent. But I wouldn't mind having a bezel like that as long as you can give me a good camera. And again, having the notch takes away the looks, the aesthetics, and I just don't know. But some people are okay with it. And it's got great battery life, right? So you're going to get great battery life. Those M chips, the M M1, M2, M1 Pro, Max, are very efficient chips. Uh, and so expect better battery life. And yeah, so far we're seeing better battery life. So I'm really curious when I get the Z13 next week, uh, or maybe even sooner, uh, we'll test the battery life on that Ryzen 6000. And we're going to see how efficient when we compare it to 12 to an Alder Lake M2 uh, chips that we're seeing now should be pretty, um, pretty interesting. But I'm not bashing on the MacBook Air. And the other problem as a content creator, it's not for me. It's not geared towards me because under heavy sustained workloads, it's going to have thermal throttling, which we're dealing with on small laptops in general most of the time. Um, but you're going to get the great battery life. You're just not going to get the great performance for sustained workloads because of the passive cooling. And I don't know how hot it's going to get up there in terms of the heat that's generated, although they do a good job on that. But again, uh, for things like 4K video editing, which is what I do in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, that's not my kind of device that I need that for. So not to say that the MacBook Air, which certainly ap appeals to the masses, uh, has its audience, certainly does. There's no doubt about it. But um, I will check it out. It's coming. I do have one. I'll have it by next week after all these reviews are out there, and we'll see. And I, get, I like having one just so we can compare the 12th Gen Alder Lakes, the 6000 series and the Ryzen's, and we'll see it. Okay, please show how easy or hard it is to dis disable the secure boot that prevents Linux from booting on the Z13. We're going to get into it all. Uh, remind me when we do another live stream, Cameron. I will look into that. My conspiracy uh, hat makes me think that added notch so everyone knows it's a Mac. It's a design thing, maybe. I guess it's a, a you know an indicator that it is a Mac. I don't know. Not my cup of tea. I'm not saying that it's not for you know certain people might like it, but it's just not my cup of tea. Um. Apple computers are going to get OLED screens in a year or two, and everyone else is going to say they innovated the whole thing. Yeah, that pisses me off. I can't stand that. Dell's been putting OLEDs in their their just you know their computers. So is Lenovo. So is HP. You know, and then they're going to say they reinvented the, the display. They made OLED. Not to say Mini LED is not good, but I think to me there's nothing like OLED. Just from the sheer brilliance of the display, the sheer blacks, the deep blacks, the really vibrant colors, the really high contrast, nothing beats it. I know mini LED gets there, the QLED, they're all there, but uh, nothing beats the OLED. I'm a big proponent of that. You know that. Even the iPhone 13 with their OLED phones. Yeah, they have really nice displays. Um, we have the 13 Pro here. You see it here. Um, and uh, I can actually try something new. So I have an NDI um, app here. And we can bring in, I can show you up close the keyboard and so forth. Um, and I can bring it in here. 
And here you can see how close these keys are. And this blinking, like I said, is only on the camera. It's in real life, it's not blinking. But you can just see how close they are, but the key travel's excellent. Now, if you go over to the Lenovo, you can see a little bit more squared off this time around. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. A little bit more squared off here. And you can see sort of the air intake system and now has like an intake system. Um, it's hard to show it on camera, but it's there. And there of course is the track point. Now I know Lenovo recently or yesterday actually showed um, a, a sneak peek at the fold, the new fold. I uh, hope I'm not giving it away too much. I don't think I am. Uh, the X1 fold, which uh, was a very like much proof, much a proof and concept device that they showed a couple of years ago at a CES. I actually have one here. Um, I've been using it behind the scenes. I may do a video on it soon just to show the potential of it. But there are some things that need to be improved on it. In fact, I was going to make a video on it. And then at the last moment I pulled the video, I didn't think it, there was too many issues that I ran into and I wanted to see if they would update it and so forth. But it is a nice proof and concept device. And I think the new one might fix a lot of that. We'll see. I thought I would hate the keyboard, but it the but it's actually not bad. Reminds me of the oldest Surface keyboard. So the keyboard is actually uh, really good on both of these. And this one's, you know, no question, this is a great keyboard. I actually love typing on the ThinkPad keyboards. But as far as this XPS 13 Plus is concerned, it's worked out really well. Better than I thought. Bro, I heard it was good. Not ThinkPad level, though. So are you talking about the... Um, the X1 Fold, it's a nice device, uh, though it's not perfect. I will talk about it very soon. Um, Apple's, phone, Apple's iPhone OLED panels are sourced from Samsung. Yes, yeah, Samsung makes a lot of these panels, the, especially the OLED. I believe this one's also Samsung. And I think they use a Samsung for their OLED option, the 2.8K. Yeah, so I'll, I'm going to talk more about it. And I didn't do a video on purpose on, on it because I wanted to see what we can, um, what I can glean from it as a proof of concept type device because it really is not a mainstream device. And I give Lenovo a lot of credit for trying something new. Uh, that's for sure. You have 57 of you watching. Can I review the Z13? Yeah, Rafi, uh, I talked about it earlier. It's it's on its way. It's left Shanghai. It's on the way to the studio, the AMD Tech Studio. Exciting times, my friend. I don't know if it's going to clear customs. I think it already did, but it didn't reach the mainland yet in the United States. So once I know that, I'll have an actual date. But it's already on its way. So stay tuned, people. It's exciting. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel because a lot of good stuff, not only the ThinkPad Z13, but there are other stuff coming to the channel. And now I wanted to do this late night, for those joining us late, I wanted to do this late night stream just to give you an update on my experience with the XPS 13 Plus from Dell and of course the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 10 from Lenovo and very different devices. This is a business or enterprise focused device. This is a consumer based device, but I think they bring a lot to the table when it comes to the mobile laptop arena, the ultra portable laptop arena with the Dell stunning design, with the great security features. And of course, this really iconic look, in my opinion, I love it, of the X1 carbon, which is a magnesium carbon uh, combo to make it not only lightweight, but durable. Here they use Gorilla Glass on here, and then of course metal or aluminum, and it's a really gorgeous design. I mean, there's no question. These are two interesting and very different approaches to a very nice looking laptops, of course, and I really like it. So according to Saad, uh, ThinkPad keyboards are just amazing. I just don't like the placement of the control function buttons. I wish it was possible to have them physically swapped via custom order and not only a BIOS level swap. Yeah, I mean, they're great keyboards. And again, I guess you might have some good points there. I mean, some people might not like the way their the function rows are, are placed, but if you that would be a nice option to have. But again, we'll have to see. According to Tech Realm, is the XPS trackpad as good as Apple's? How is the haptic feedback? So the haptic feedback on this one has actually been pretty good. Um, 
And when I say that is because I was really surprised by how good it was. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Um, and we're going to take a look at it right now up close. So here it is. And this area here between the space bar, between the alt keys, is where it actually works. And actually when you um, are pressing on it, and you probably can't hear it, but it gives a very nice little vibration or haptic feedback, a very natural feeling. And is it as good as the MacBook Pro? It's on that par. It's that good. Certainly the best implementation of a haptic touchpad for a Windows laptop. Yes, I think this is the one. This is the best one. Uh, is it as good as the MacBook Pro? You know, I would say it's there. It's up there. Maybe a, a shade, a shade or a smidge below maybe. But it's that good. And I think they'll only get better once they really perfect it. It's actually a, for a first generation type product. And that's really what it is. The plus is it's a new, even though it's on the part of the XPS 13 line, uh, it's definitely uh, a great first try. In fact, it's probably almost perfect in a lot of ways, a lot better than I thought. And I wasn't sure without any delineation of where it begins and ends, but it's just natural feeling. You know where to place your fingers and everything just is responsive. It, it just works. So it's been good in that regard. And that's that. So yeah, I think it's um, it's pretty nice. I, I, I like what they did there. So you have the Gen 9 and haven't noticed that issue might have got a dud. So I don't know what they're talking about. So that would be KGL. Where's KGL? You have the 9th. Let's get you on the broadcast here. I had the 9th uh, Gen and earlier this year, the case and hinge cracked terribly. Wow. Creaked, I'm sorry, creaked. Tried a couple and they both exhibited the same issue. No creaking at all on Gen 10, at least with my unit. So that's just what I've observed so far. And Bra has the Gen 9 and hasn't noticed that issue. Might have gotten a dud. So I don't know, maybe. So you like a delineated, okay. Yeah, Cameron, I, I, I'm like you. I thought, you know, when I first saw this, how the hell is this going to work? When I first saw it at CES and I used it and look, it worked fine, but I think they did a lot of tweaking since then. Obviously that was a, not a pro uh, production device yet. They were still uh, working it out pre-production, but as a shipping retail unit, again, I bought this with my own money. This came like, just like anybody else. I ordered it. I paid the money. Uh, and you know what? I'm getting no special treatment on this. And of course, this worked out really well. I, this was the one thing that I was very, very concerned about. And that's been the least of my problems with that. So it's been very good. And, you know, I used to know, not love the haptic touchpads, but when Apple did it, and you could see it here on this one, my 2019, uh, 26, I'm sorry, 2019 16 inch, uh, one of the best. And then again, when I have this one here, works out really well. So it, it to me, it's it's gotten a lot better. And this is by far the best implementation on a Windows laptop. I know Lenovo did it with their Yoga 9i. And last year, I, I think the black one with the glass and the leather. And that one was okay. They used a Sensil, I believe, on that. And it was very good. But this is, this is actually really, really good. It's on par with the MacBook. Maybe a smidge less if you want to be a nitpicking, but uh, really, really good. I think Apple has the trackpad figured out best in class. Yeah, they've, they've done a fantastic job. I mean, you can see it here. I mean, using this, I'm, it's so natural, has a nice feel to it, very responsive. So yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, I ordered a 9320 XPS uh, Plus, but since notice since that many units are having heating issues, have you noticed this? So I talked a little bit about it early in the live stream, uh, James, but I can tell you, this will ramp up to 100 degrees, and I noticed it would get to about 100 or 98 and 100 degrees, and they would let it rip. So, um, and then it might it would go down a little bit, but not bad. It does get it does run a little bit when you're putting it on the heavy load. You will notice the the surface temperatures get hot, which is not to be unexpected. But the performance was good, and I thought you know for everyday tasks, it remained cool and quiet. And for most 95% of the people, that's going to be perfectly fine. Unless you're using all the cores and you're, and again, this is not a gaming laptop. And I've been making that very clear. Uh, 
then you have to look elsewhere. But for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, you're going to be fine. Everybody calm down. You're going to be fine on both of these. So, okay. Um, according to Tech Realm, I think XPS has actual multiple vibration motors for the zoning. So they have a video on it, and I don't know the mechanics of it. I just know that when I use it, Tech Realm, it works great. I have no complaints. And I watched some other reviews. Uh, I think Just Josh just did a review. And by the way, he did a great job on it. But he doesn't have the OLED. He has, I think, the two versions. I think he had, what did I see? He had the 4K Plus and then the Full HD Plus. Now, uh, he liked it as well. He's pretty picky, of course, as, as I am. He may be a little bit more than I am, but he did a great uh, video on that. So if you haven't checked it out, go over to his channel. It's good. And I'm going to have my full review three weeks with this device, probably finishing that tonight, hopefully to get it out by the weekend. I will, I'll schedule it for the weekend. I might even do a premiere. And then, of course, I will also have the x1 carbon gen 10 my full review that's pretty much done as well i'll get more into what i think about these laptops but for the and specifically for the x1 carbon the gen 10 again i talked about it earlier i went over to reddit which is mistake number one but uh, <laughs> the, the the cesspool of reddit but i checked it out and a lot of people were make, giving a lot of misinformation i wanted to clear that up earlier today because i People were saying the Gen 9 was beating the Gen 10. That is not true in my testing. When I ran heavy sustained workloads, yes, you will throttle down. It's just the way it's, they designed it. But it definitely did better in multi-core and single-core performance, even under heavy sustained workloads. I have the Gen 9, I have the Gen 10, and that's what I found. So uh, all that other stuff where the people are peddling misinformation over on Reddit, uh, you know, you can believe in it. The people don't want to believe somebody who makes videos on YouTube because that was the consensus that I gleaned from that. But I'm just telling you the numbers. You know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. So thoughts on the M2 MacBook. So uh, very, very mixed reviews so far. And I know the, the fanboys that did their videos that Apple seeded them to are going to be overglowing. But if you dig down and you look at the underbelly, the problems I see on that are going to be the notch, number one. I, I don't like it personally, aesthetically. That's not the big problem. The big problem you're going to be is the slow SSD speeds and I also and the performance gains may not be that great. In fact, it's a little bit underwhelming. Uh, there's no active cooling on the MacBook Air M2, and that's going to be another issue especially for sustained workloads. You're going to notice the throttling and the degradation of performance, which is not uncommon on a thin and light. So that's great. So, which has been common, I should say, not great. But what I should point out is I do have an M1 Mac, I have a MacBook Air M2 coming, and I just did a poll. And so far, people are saying 71% want to see it on the channel to see my review. I shouldn't cancel it. And then 29% said no. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, yeah, always great review. Thank you, Rafi. I appreciate it. How good or long is the battery for the X1 Carbon? So I ran my second test. I tweaked it down. If you didn't catch it earlier, I will have it in the review, of course. Uh, I got over nine hours on this one, uh, just making some changes from my first test that I ran. So you can get over nine hours on my uh, continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi with 100 nits, Bluetooth off, on a power efficiency mode. If you're gonna do mixed use, you can maybe get six to seven hours depending on what you're doing. Uh, again, it just depends on what you're doing. This one, I ran a second test, did the same thing. I got eight and a half, or no, eight hours and 40 minutes, I should say, on this one. Not terrible, not as what people are making them out to be. The XPS would have been great with the Ryzen 6800H. Yeah, but that, that would have created too much heat with the H series on a thin, like, I don't know if they can do that engineering-wise. Uh, Tech Realm thinks he's going to pick up the MacBook Air M2 soon. I can get a 512, 16 gig model for $1,350, which is $150 over the normal price due to education discount. So you're going to get a nice discount. That's nice. Uh, they have the good education pricing. So, yeah, I mean, check it out. I'm going to have mine coming in, and we'll look at it. And look, for what I do, it's not for me because of the active, the passive cooling, I should say, not active. It doesn't have active. It has passive cooling. So it doesn't have a fan in it or anything like that. And I think when you're going to put it on a heavy sustained workload, you're going to, you're going to have the problems. That's where it all begins. So really, to me, it, it's just a matter of 
uh, what kind of battery life you want, because those are going to give you some pretty good battery life, of course. They're very efficient. Uh, but they're, everybody's making these out to be terrible when it comes to the battery. Not great. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that 12th gen Alder Lake are blowing anything out of 11th gen. But the performance gains that you get over the 11th gen that I've been seeing are pretty significant, 30, 40, maybe even 50% in some tests. So you really got to ask yourself, what am I using this for? For everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, everything worked fine. There has been no issues when it comes to that. But it's when you think you're going to do AAA gaming on a thin and light laptop, that's just not feasible. And I make that very clear in the video. You want to get something with a discrete GPU. Now, of course, you could add external GPUs thanks to the Thunderbolt 4 ports that this has, uh, both of them. So, yes, uh, I think there are some things. Um, I'm glad, Zay, you found the channel. Good to see that you're here with us, and, um, and I'm glad you liked it. So, uh, thank you for joining us. All right. So where are we? Let's see. 74 of you watching and we got 40 likes. What's the deal, people? Hit the thumbs up. Let's uh, get it. I didn't notice any coil wine. I was trying to figure out if there was any. I didn't detect any. I don't know if anybody else did. I didn't. I looked for that. Now, I did notice some PWM on this, which is not, uh, of course, because it's an OLED. You're going to have that. So under, I think, 30, 40 percent, I'm if you go below, I'm sorry, 40%, you'll notice the PWM on this. So, but I keep it, I like to keep mine as bright as possible. Sacrifice the battery life, not a big deal to me, but uh, you will notice PWM. I didn't notice any on that IPS over there. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, man. That's pretty cool. So, B. Iqbal wanted to upgrade to the Gen 10 or the 13 Plus. But Intel did me dirty. Even my four-year-old NV13 gives me five to six hours. Oh no, you're gonna get you're gonna do okay. You this did over nine hours on my last test. So you'll get you'll get six to seven hours on this, depending on what you're doing. Again, how f bright you make the there's a lot of factors. The screen brightness, obviously, what what mode you're on, uh, what you're doing is gonna play a huge part. Uh, so there are a lot of things, what radios you have on and so forth. So it's just a matter of what you're doing with it. Please vouch for high key travel in the ThinkPad. So I've been using this for the past week or so, or two weeks, whatever, however, how long I've had it so far. Uh, love the keyboard on the XPS. Absolutely love this keyboard. This thing has been fantastic. Um, it's got good key travel. I like it. In fact, I like it better than the Gen 9. Something a little bit different about it. I think they squared off the keys a little bit more. And of course, they have that air intake system, but that really doesn't affect the typing. Uh, it's still a spill-resistant keyboard, and I think it's worked out pretty well so far. So feels just good key, key travel, good key feedback, good tactility. Uh, it's a pretty good one. You don't feel like your fingers are going to bottom out. This one's really surprisingly good. That's how good this one is as well. So just very different approaches. You notice how these are spaced out more. These are closer together, but they both take a different route to get to a very good result. So, so far looking good. Is that the third, third point? Yes, it is. So this is the 3.5K. OLED display and check out my video unboxing first look video check out my live unboxing and check out all the things I've done my one week later live stream really good information on there for 3.5k touch display OLED uh the resolution of course is going to be and I'll check it out right here just to give you the exact 3456 by 2160 it's a touch display 60 hertz so the other thing I want to talk about there's no high refresh rate option on either one of these you know you can get with the MacBook Pros I think they have 120 hertz with available variable refresh rate that or the dynamic refresh rate I should say but this actually does not have more than 60 hertz and it doesn't bother me because it would take I think it would take a hit on the battery even more and again battery life not stellar to begin with honestly I wonder how the ventilation works on the Gen 10 with the keyboard as well as uh being spill resistant I thought the same thing I have no idea to be honest with you tech realm but uh yeah I thought the same thing but you can actually sort of see it. Let me see if you can sort of see it. Um, it's hard to show. I can't really show it. But actually, let me bring in that other camera. Let's get a closer look at the keyboard. Maybe we can get it a little bit better 
look at it and let me bring it in here. Okay, and you know what? Let me take me off of there for now. Okay, so here we have it. So we can try to get a good look. You can sort of see there are like uh, vents there. You can see it there. And you can see the key travel has been pretty good. And this is also still a spill resistant. Now, if I hit the um, function and then of course the space bar, that turns on the backlight. And then you can see the backlight. After using an OLED display, it's hard to go back. I agree. And it's a great keyboard, people. It, they've redesigned a lot of the things on it. And it's got that, that ThinkPad feel to it. I think for, for whatever reason last year had it, it's even better now. And I'm a, I was a big fan of that one as well. So the sound is pretty good. These are the Dolby Atmos speakers as well on this. Uh, that's worked out pretty well. And we'll talk more about it. And then, of course, we have this one here. A little bit different approach. Equally as good in a lot of ways. Uh, the only thing is, if you put on the backlight, and I think I have it off here. Here we go. So the keys light up. And the, the, the actual letters light up. And sometimes it's hard to see it. It's on right now, believe it or not but I have so many lights, it's, it's just gonna be too hard to see. So that's pretty much it with these keyboards. This, uh, obviously the X1 Carbon Gen 10, and then of course the XPS 13 Plus. So that's the deal on that, people. Um, and I, I think in the end of the day, we're looking at some pretty nice devices. Let me get rid of that. All right, so, oops. So that's using NDI, you know, for those with a little technical, thing so we got our uh, a new member captain lex just became a member welcome to the club welcome to the family so uh, i'm glad you became a member and uh i will do i did a live uh i did a members only post last week i'll do some try to do it on a weekly basis as well and i may if we get enough people i can do another live stream just for the members so if you want to become a member people hit that join button there are three levels and I'm going to try to do more. I also have a Discord server. Tech Realm is over there, of course. And uh, we can answer a lot of your questions. I've been trying to go on more often lately. I post a lot of updates there as well, not only on the member side, but on, of course, the Discord. I think we have close to or maybe over 600 people by now. So it's grown quite a bit. So if you want to check it out, uh, link will be in the description or go to my channel. I should have it somewhere there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. And... Uh, no problem, man. No problem. And a welcome, you know, Captain Lex to loving the live show. So I'm glad you're able to join us. I know it's late tonight, especially on the East Coast of the United States. Uh, we started late. Again, I did a, sort of an impromptu one here. We got 66 of you watching. So, yeah, I mean, why not? Sometimes you just want to go live, uh, take a break. I wanted to take a break from doing the videos. I'm actually working on the reviews uh, as we were speak as I was Get leading into this live stream. And I said, you know what? Let's do a live stream. I didn't do one in a week. Wanted to give you an update of what's been going on. So far, so good. So that's where we are. We're now, um, where are we now? We're at an uh, hour and five minutes. So I don't know how much longer we're going to go. I tried to get to everybody's, yeah, everybody's question. Let's see what other. Amazing reviews according to Saad. Thanks a lot. I always learn something new when I watch your videos and the live stream absolutely has the same vibe and feel. I'm glad these are not easy to do. These are not easy to do. That's for sure. Is there a delay? I see a little bit of a delay. And here, by the way, for those who want the discord, there's the discord. But anyway, we're going to probably call it a night because I got a lot more to do and I'm sweating here. <laughs> so uh, I got to put the, the AC on. But um, Lee, I think we're going to call it a, a live stream because I think we're over an hour, almost an hour and six minutes already. All right, people. I don't know why there's a little bit of a delay. Anyway, but a good job on the moderators. Thank you so much. I know there's a delay. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I want to thank the moderators for doing such a good job. 
A lot more to come, people. The Z13's on the way. And I got all the videos coming of these two. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss anything. See you next time, everybody. Thank you, Tech Realm. Thank you, Handquake. Thank you, everybody else. Bye-bye.